I don't know why, but all of my online colleagues have started to use the OG term to refer to those who were there at the beginning. Um, it stands for original gangster, I guess. I don't know. I'm not hip enough to, to, to use it comfortably in everyday conversation. But when I think about productivity utilities, I know there is one utility which I consider genuine OG. That's Text Expander. We'll look at it today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. And today's video is one about doing more, becoming far more productive. Text Expander is a tool that I've been using for probably six or seven years. It used to be available as just a Mac only tool, but now it's cross platform and it's uh, it actually shares file formats back and forth between Windows and Macintosh. So it is a nice ubiquitous tool now. And what Text Expander is, and it doesn't sound super sexy just on the surface, it's a text it's a keyboard expansion utility. You type in a keyboard shortcut and it fills text in that uh, that that shortcut relates to. Now that doesn't sound on the surface to be too exciting, but give me a few minutes and I will get you excited about this product, I can promise you. In the productivity space, it crosses over almost into the, our notebook space a little bit between Evernote and OneNote, uh, allowing us to store pieces of information that we need to access again, but instead of browsing through notebooks to find that content, it instead allows us to automatically insert it into a document. So it works for doing spelling correction, for sourcing URLs, different web addresses, or preform letters that you might use over and over again, uh, auto replies, all of that kind of stuff text expander does but it also helps you doing things like naming files and putting in dates and serial numbers and things like that because it's got intelligence built into it that's a lot to tell you about i think i should just show you if you visit their site at textexpander.com you can get more information i'll put a link in below and full disclosure right now i'm a customer of text expander i pay each and every year for text expander i buy an annual license but I'm also an affiliate for Text Expander. It's a tool that I'm happy to recommend, uh, so we will put our affiliate link in below as well. So let's jump in and show it to you. Text Expander installs as a system resource in both Windows and Mac, and here it is in my in my menu bar. And if I open Text Expander, I'm brought into the main management area for Text Expander. And what we've got here is we've got a, a field that allows us to put in the content that we're going to be creating or entering in uh, in, in auto filling. And then we've got down the left-hand side here, a library of all of the different snippets we use, which are our text expander files. They call each of the expansion modules a snippet. It, it, it can be a huge volume of text, or it can be a very small amount of text, but they're all called snippets. Now, how you actually invoke them is you, uh, you create a keyboard shortcut for each one that you want to use. And so if I want to let people know about Webinar Wednesday, our upcoming Webinar Wednesday, I've created a shortcut and I use the uh, I use the pound key to let me know that it's gonna be a shortcut. This is my own, my own uh, naming metaphor and it's called Web Wednesday, Web Wed. And you see, you hear that boink, an expansion? That's Text Expander working. It takes what you type and then expands it out. So you have to remember the shortcut so if you come up with a with a naming convention that makes sense for you, you can keep thousands of different shortcuts in your brain and it will remember all of the detail. It's ideal for things like web URLs and that sort of stuff, but it also works for correcting spelling and correcting um, common spelling mistakes and common typos that you make. For example, I always type in T-E-H instead of T-H-E when I'm typing. So if I go in T-E-H, it changes it to the. I also always manage to hit the colon instead of the apostrophe when I'm typing in contractions like can't. I don't know, it's just my typing style. So watch what happens if I hit can. See, that's the way I type it in, ah, but it changes it. I've set it up to change it. So it can catch common mistakes that you make, common spelling mistakes, and also conven the convenience of text that you have to use on an ongoing basis and publish. Now let's open Text Expander again and let's show you how you go about creating these snippets. So you can see here that they're all filed, first of all, by type. So these are my snippets, which are ones which are the shortcuts uh, to things like web URLs or text that I often send. My mistakes, these are me catching my mistakes that I make on an ongoing basis and 
putting in fixes for them. Links, which are web links that I want to be able to send easily without having to look them up each and every time. So you get an idea for the types of documents or the types of text that you can send. They also will suggest snippets, which are things that you type over and over again, and they offer you shortcuts. Uh, but these are all, uh, typically speaking, when they're offering suggestions, they're often like, do you wanna use a snippet instead of your name or a snippet instead of your phone number, which is fine. But I don't find those particular text strings too arduous to type in. Uh, the ones that I do find arduous are web URLs or full letters. And I will show you a little more on that in a moment. So let's actually go about creating one. And actually I'm gonna create a more advanced one because I wanna take advantage of this and show you some of the great features, uh, some of the great additional features that should excite you about Text Expander. So I've just got in the beginning of like an automatic reply letter that I've put in here. So let me first of all show you how you create a simple snippet. So what we're, this is gonna be plain text. We can see we can actually, it can be, you can set up plain text, you can set up scripts, and you can also set it up to incorporate pictures if you choose. Now here's the organizational side, a label. This is for your own purposes so you know exactly what it is. So I'm gonna say this is an intro letter. So that's just kind of an, an English language term. It's not used for anything except your own reference. The abbreviation is what's important. The abbreviation is the keyboard string that you're gonna type in that's gonna invoke the snippet. Now I like to start all of my snippets with a, with a hashtag, with a pound key. And so I'm gonna type this in as intro let or just intro let's just call it intro there we go now before i go on you can choose to make your abbreviation case sensitive or ignore the case so if you ignore the case that means if you happen to keep the keyboard the shift key down while you type in intro or you're on ca caps lock when you type in the word intro it says intro intro there we go intro it will still work once you've done this you don't even have to save anything. It automatically saves it and it's automatically available to you. And you can test it right away just by going to any text field and I'm gonna type go I, I-N-T-R-O and it fills the information in. Do you see how easy that is? That's pretty useful, but it gets way better. Allow me to show you the way better part. Let's go back into Text Expander, and I'm gonna show you some features they have here in the menu along the top. Text Expander also has the ability to fill in information for you. So here you might, if since you're sending a letter, you want the person's name included in the letter. So what we do is we go fill ins, choose what type of information you wanna have. So it can be a pop-up menu. The, I'm just gonna set a single line text and I'm gonna call it field one. There it is. So now it's gonna prompt me to put the person's name in the letter when I deliver it. So let's try it again. So I'm gonna type in intro and you see what's happened now is it actually doesn't do it in the screen it waits and it pops up with a field for you to fill in so i'm going to say here dear dave and then say okay and then it populates with the name dave that's pretty cool but it gets better because you might want to say dave's name multiple times you might want to say dave down here as well say you want to reinforce it and make the letter seem even more personal so we can actually put an insertion point in here and choose the same field there, add a comma, space. Now let's fill it in again and have a look. And now when I type in Dave in the field, to see what it does, it fills it in both places because it's the same information. So imagine that you're say setting up an appointment and you want to remind people of the date of the appointment. You put it in the top of the letter, you remind them at the bottom of the letter, you can do that sort of thing. Pretty cool, eh? Speaking of dates, it also does things like calculations. Now this kind of blew me away. So look at what I've said in this letter. I'm so glad you're interested in our products. Here's a link to our pricing and delivery schedules. Oh, of course, we can put in the web link there. But watch what I've said here. I wanna make sure you understand the timeframes. To avoid disappointment, we currently have a lead time of three weeks. So the earliest you could expect delivery would be, I can put in a calculation here that will tell him what the date is gonna be three weeks from now in this email. Oh, are you ready for this? Now, it takes a little bit of sleuthing to figure it all out, but here's the process because we've got all of the tools here. What I wanna put in is I want to start with an add days command. So it then I put in here the number of days that I want to add and I want to add 21 days. <laughs> Just follow me on this. And then a, I put in I want to add the 
day, Monday, comma, space, the month, comma, space, and then the day number, which is there, day. All right. <laughs> now, if I've done this right, I feel like a programming wizard. Let's see if it's going to work. I love the fact that you just enter the information and you can test it right away. Intro. Okay. Now, the date today is Monday, September 17th. So three weeks from now is Monday, October 8th. That absolutely works. There it is. Dave entered, entered, would be Monday, October 8th. Can you see the value in that? If say you send out an email, which is a thank you email for everybody with uh, invoices that you send out and you want to say, please remember that our payment is due in two weeks from today, you can automatically create that date and, and insert it. And it goes beyond just the calculations that I'm talking about. There are so many other ways that you can fill in information. You can, you can create little databases with pop-up fields that allows you to put in product information or product descriptions or, or serial numbers. Your imagination is really what's going to limit you as far as how you end up using Text Expander, but you need to recognize looking at this tool that it is a tool that the more you use, the more use you will get from it. Actually, they send you an email on a regular basis that lets you know how much time you've saved by using the different expansions. I know this video is already getting a little bit long, but there's one other thing that I want to share with you if you stuck to me this long, and that is sharing. I want to share with you the fact that you can share your snippets with team members. Now, I won't go into too much detail about how it all works right now, but let me show you right here. We are in, if you go into the text expander menu at the very top here, you can create a new group. When I create a new group, that allows me to, if you take a look here, once I name the group, to share the whatever snippets I put in this group with team members. Now, this will actually launch me onto the web version of the tool and allow me to then link it to different team members and allow different group members to join in. So you can share certain snippets with members of your team and you, well, your imagination is already firing off about how that can work in a team setting. But we've gone on long enough. I think I've given you a really good idea of what Text Expander can do for you. Now, before we wrap up, just a couple of things. First of all, I know there are other great text expansion tools. I haven't used them, but I know that there are other ones that you may consider using that are just as good as text expander. I can't compare one to the other because I haven't used the other ones. I'm really happy with what text expander has brought to the table. Now, as far as a tip, if you do decide to get in and start using text expander or any expansion utility, uh, one tip I will give you is think long and hard about your naming convention, how you're going to name your snippets, because uh, you always want to have a, mo a modifier before your snippet and a consistent modifier using the same modifier, I think is really important. Now I've been using it so long that the pound key uh, wasn't used for things like hashtags back in the day when I started. So if I was to start over again, setting up my text expander, I probably would use either the dollar sign or the percent key uh, percent sign before my expansions because they aren't used in normal discourse. Who would have ever thought that the pound key would become part of our day-to-day -day communication? Uh, that's how long I've been using Text Expander. I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you using a text expansion tool? Is it valuable to you? Are you using a different one? Let me know which one you're using if you aren't using text expander or if you do embrace it, if you do start to use it, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I read each and every comment here at Dottotech. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.